This is our last unit, or our last lesson in our Intro to Algebra unit, and it's looking at two more properties, the commutative and the associative property. In, previous, in our previous lessons, we looked at the distributive property, and so these are just two more properties that we have. And so here's how these two properties work. With the commutative property, when I think of the commutative property, I think of driving my car, commutative car. We're commuting somewhere. We're going somewhere. And in relation to mass, that means that if I add two numbers together, like 3 plus 2, that's 5. That's the same thing as if I switch those numbers around and add 2 plus 3. I still get 5. So the commutative property says if I'm adding two numbers together, I can write them down either way, 3 plus 2 or 2 plus 3, and I'll get the same answer. So I can move them all over. The same thing applies if I have 3 or 4 or 5 numbers and we're adding them all together. We can move and switch those numbers around any way that we want. We'll still end up with the same answer. So that's helpful when we want to group numbers together so that they're easier to add. And it also applies to multiplying exactly the same way. By multiplying numbers together, I can move numbers around, and I still get the same answer. This only works for adding and multiplying, and it has to be just adding or just multiplying. So when you commute, we're driving our car, we're commuting, we're moving to a different spot, we'll still get the same answer. In the associative property, in the word associative, I see the word associate, or part of it. And that means to group things together. So with numbers, if I'm adding them together again, I can group certain parts of it together, and I will get the same answer as if I group different parts of that problem together. And same thing as multiplying. But this only works if it's all adding or all multiplying. I think this will make more sense once we look at an example. So here's our first example we're going to look at. This problem is all multiplying, so that means that these commutative and associative properties do apply because it's all multiplying. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at what properties we're using in each step to solve this problem to help us figure out and associate those properties with where they fit into this problem. So it says 4 times 3 times 5 times 2. Now, I could solve it just like this using order operations, and that would work just fine. I'd get my answer. But we can also move things around, group things together in this problem to make it easier for us to solve. So we wouldn't even have to write as much down, or we could do it more mentally. So if I look right here, I can see that they moved the 5 here and the 3 here. So we moved some of the numbers around. When we move numbers, we commute them to a new spot. I'm driving my car to a new spot. We're using the commutative property. So on this line, I'm just going to put a C, and then we're multiplying, so it's the commutative property of multiplication. In this next step coming down, I can see that we've added some parentheses, because we're going to multiply these two numbers together, and we're going to multiply these two numbers together, so it gives us easier numbers to work with. And when we group numbers or associate the numbers with each other, we're using the associative property, and it's the associative property of multiplication, because we're multiplying. These last two steps, we're not really using a power or a property. We're just simpli simply simplifying the problem. So there's no property used there. But in this problem, we did use the commutative and the associate problem properties. We're going to look at one more problem. Here it says 2 times the quantity 4 plus w all plus 8. So first I can see that we've multiplied some of this out. And that is not one of our properties here, but if you think back to the distributive property, remember the distributive property is where we take that number on the outside and multiply by both numbers inside, I can see that that's what happened in this problem. 2 times 4 is 8, hold on the plus sign, 2 times w is 2w, and carry down the 8. So in this part, we actually use the distributive property. And it's not a multiplying, it's not an adding, it's just the distributive property. Now we have all one operation. Now it's all just adding. Now we can use our commutative and our associative property. So if I look here, it looks like they moved it around so that the 8s were next to each other, our constants were next to each other. So remember when we move things around, we commute, we drive to a new spot, we're using the commutative property. And in this case, we're adding, so it's the commutative property of addition. And then in this next step, I can see that we grouped part of the problem together, so we can add those constants together. And when we group or associate numbers with each other, we're using the associative property, and it's of addition because we're all adding in this problem. And in this last step, we simply simplified, so we didn't use a property. 
Now, we can use these properties to help us actually solve problems. So we're going to find one last one here, and this time we're going to figure out the answer to the problem, and then we're going to write down what properties we use to help us solve this problem. So the very first thing, I see addition in this problem, but because there's a number right next to the parentheses, that means that we're doing multiplication, so I can't use my properties yet. But I do know a property that we can use. We can use the distributive property. So let's do that part first. 4 times a is 4a. Pull down our plus sign. 4 times 1 is 4. And now I can just rewrite the rest of my problem. So in this case, this first step, we use the distributive property. Now I see just addition, so now we can go ahead and use our properties. So I have a 4a, a 4, a 2a, and an 8. I think the best choice to start with might be to move some of these numbers around, some of these terms around, so that we have all of our like terms next to each other. So let's do that. So I'm going to have 4a, and a like term of 4a would be 2a. So I'm going to write those two next to each other. And then we also have a 4 and an 8. So I'm going to write those next to each other. And what property goes along with that? Well, we commuted them. We moved the numbers to different spots. I'm driving my car to a new spot. So we use the commutative property. And this problem is using addition, so it's the commutative property of addition. And then we're going to group things together because I want to be able to add 4 and 2 in this part. And I want to add 4 and 8 over here. So I'm going to rewrite the problem again. And I'm going to group some of these parts together, the things that we can actually add together. So I can add 4a and 2a. And then we can also add 4 and 8. So I'm going to put parentheses around there. And that property, remember, when we're grouping things together or associating them with each other, is the associative property. And it's of addition again because we're adding in this problem. And then our last step is simply to simplify. So 4a plus 2a is 6a plus 4 plus 8 is 12. And that would be our answer. No property with that last step because we're just simplifying. And that's how we use the commutative and the associative properties.